Well, hi there, folks. Um, Simon here, Ariège Pipe Smoker, and welcome to, I think it's episode 10 of How to Process Whole Leaf Tobacco. I should have actually checked beforehand, but I think it's 10. Um, yeah, and on this video, we are going to do some pressing without a press. Uh, I've been experimenting with a few different um, formulas and blends over the weekend, uh, and I kind of come up with something that I think is passable. Um, just to reiterate, it's, you could faff around for a very long time, um, but not having the experience of how the blend is necessarily going to taste in six months' time, or even after pressing, um, there comes a time where I think you have to draw a line and move ahead to the next step. So, yeah, we're going to be... Well, I'm going to show you how to press without a, without a press. Um, some of you may have seen um, a video I did on this last year. Um, there's probably a couple of improvements. Um, there is a bit of an experimental element, um, which I'm not sure is going to work, uh, but we shall see. Um, I have the tobacco all weighed out here. Um, I'm keeping it under the table just, just to keep the sun off. I don't really want it drying out. It's, it's not so hot today, but uh, so we're going to do be doing a. It's mostly Virginia, um, and we're going to put some Perique in. At, uh, if my mathematics is correct, round at about seven percent Perique. Um, and I found that just putting a very small amount of um, Oriental in really kind of helped bring it to life a little bit. Um, now, just before we get started, I have a slight theory with Perique. Um, this may or may, I'll just put this out of the sun again while I'm talking. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I have a theory with Perique and it may or may not be true, but because it is only a theory. Now, as most people probably are aware, um, Perique is made by basically holding it under pressure in its own juices so you get a reaction, a fermentation, without the presence of oxygen there. Um, and I've kind of looked into it, and it's a very um, complicated process, um, uh, biologically, I guess. Um, and, and basically, like, loads of horrible things get involved in the fermentation you know the stuff that really really you don't want but it's a kind of necessary part of it and as this fermentation um, progresses you end up I, I forget the exact latin name but uh, a very particular strain of yeast um, is kind of what finishes the fermentation and is what is present um, at the end with the finished perique so Perique must be by default full of this yeast in the you know in, 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 in when it arrives to us either in a blend or as a um, uh, a blending tobacco so when you put Perique into the blend and especially if you press it my theory is that this yeast then continues its work um, to a certain extent um, with the surrounding tobaccos around it because you kind of created an environment um, that is under pressure, no oxygen present, um, and, and that, you know, yeast is a living thing. So I kind of think that yeast, um, the flavour of Perique will permeate because it's quite a strong flavour, but also possibly this, this yeast starts colonising the, the tobacco surrounding the Perique. Um, the reason I've chosen 7%, um, first and foremost, is I've only got 100 grams of Perique to play with, so that there is a limitation there. And also my two new favourite um, Virginia Perique blends, and I think they do have a bit of Oriental, are the Dan to back um, Ascanian blends. There's the Riverside blend, which is 5% Perique, and the Castle blend, which is 10% Perique. So I kind of thought to just aim in the middle, use 7%, and this is gonna leave 
30, 40 grams of Perique left over, which we, we can put into an English blend with some Latakias um, later on. So, back to the tobacco. I kind of have it all weighed out, the various um, proportions. Um, the experiment, experimental bit of this, I have this, um, I don't know, it's like a, a PVC sheet here. There's a bit of condensation on it, that's, that's not to worry about that. I just gave it a bit of a wash. Um, and I'm going to try and use this as a bit of um, a rolling mat uh, to try and get a, a reasonable amount of compression uh, before we do the um, the wrapping process, but we'll come on to that. So this is the bit that may or may not work. Um, and I'm not 100% sure. Um, this is going to be the width of the uh, what we're making. So yeah, we're okay as long as I keep it in from the edges we should be okay so um yeah let's try the experiment um i think these are the oriental leaves i've prepared so i'm just gonna uh i did think about um unwrapping all of the leaves but i, I don't think it's necessary um, and it's very time consuming because we're not really making, um, I mean, when I've made these in the past, I, I cut it and I rub it out. So it's not like we're making like a medallion that you, you'd fold and stuff necessarily. Um, there is a video on YouTube called um, how, I think it's called how to make, um, but it's basically this technique is one that I've kind of modified from an old, um, English sailing technique and it's called a naval perique and not to be confused with St. James perique. Um, if I remember I'll put a link to the uh, original video um, where I kind of slightly bastardized and adopted. So they're yeah, reasonably even um, and I'm kind of hoping this is going to help me kind of do an initial roll. It's a bit tricky going that way, obviously. But I'm hoping if I come round here now, and if I trap this end, my legs against the table, and work it towards me a bit more. Oops, sorry about the seasickness, it's a bit wobbly. I'm hoping now, yeah, it seems to be working. I can get a slight roll on it, and that's that direction. Yeah, that's not bad actually. It'll all fall apart now. Well, let me see if I can stop this rocking because it's going to be incredibly annoying otherwise, isn't it, for the viewers at home? Maybe if I wedge a bag. It's like there's been a lot of rainfall in the night, so I've um, kind of put this wooden table top, wooden table top, just to keep her stuff at bay. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is uh, helping or not, to be honest. I guess I'll persevere with it a bit. Again, it's uh, untried, untried. <laughs> so, this is, uh, I forget what kind of Virginia this is actually. So this may or may not be uh, a good idea trying to do a pre-roll um, but it might make sense 
when we get a little bit further on. Um, it could be a reasonably um, lengthy video, this one, uh, just because there's a fair amount of work involved. Um, I'll probably edit the, the, um, <laughs> the boring bits out, as always. I mean, I guess if I unrolled all of the leaves, it would be a bit more homogenised, but uh, it would take hours and hours. And I think once it's um, kind of pressed and uh, doing its thing, it won't matter. So... Oh. See if it is rolling them up. Yes, I'm hoping it will. Yeah, it seems to be doing. That seems to be. Uh... doing its thing well I guess for the um, um, for the sake of um, not making this a three-hour video I'm going to pause it now I'm going to go through the rest of the uh, Virginias here and form um, this kind of um, pre-roll if you like um, and then we'll get on to the actual um, pressing itself Okay, guys, I'll see you back here in um, a few minutes. Well, we've got it all in there. Um, I should have said, actually, this is, um, if my uh, calculations are correct, 500 grams. Um, so I'm going to aim to do two of these. That will be um, a kilo. Um, it does kind of help, this um, PVC sheeting, to do the form. Um, kind of give it quite a lot of manual compression with my hand here and I hope I'm not shaking the table too much and also I can um, hopefully you can see this I can push in the ends to form the ends a bit Pretty much good enough to get on to the next stage. Let's get rid of that. And for the next stage, I need some pieces of string. The string is um, soaking in water, um, I'll explain that. Uh, I'll explain it, yeah, I'll explain it when we get our. Uh, get pressing so it has um it's kind of relevant um okay so if my calculations are somewhere correct yeah that should fit onto there trim off a few of these straggly bits doesn't really matter these um bags it's a section of a bag. You can probably see it's woven. Um, they're made from food grade plastic, so they're kind of heat proof. Um, not going to leach any nasties into the tobacco. And also it can kind of breathe a bit being um, woven. Right, so let's try and attempt the impossible. Yeah, not so impossible as it turns out. Yes. 
my aim is, um, I'm hoping it's possible, to compress this down to uh, around about three centimetres. Um, because that means when it comes to posting the tobacco out, it can go into padded envelopes um, for um, letter boxes rather than into uh, kind of um, cardboard parcels. And one thing I've realised, if it can go into padded envelopes like jiffy bags, there's no customs declaration. So uh, I'm hoping that we can get it down to that kind of dimensions. Should be able to. that and to hold it in place a piece of string the small bits of string are to tie the ends like um, a bit like a Christmas cracker I guess so I can kind of uh, pack the tobacco in Pressing, I think I've probably made this one slightly too long, um, but it's kind of doable. It's kind of doable. Let's put a bit of string on there. safe to invert it now kind of repeat process of this end yeah, I should be able to get it down to a uh, three centimeters or so Kind of need uh, octopus hands. Need uh, oh, an extra pair of hands sometimes. Ready for pressing. It's a bit of a faff getting there, but there's one big advantage of this technique. Um, the biggest one is obviously you don't need to press. Um, but if you do have a press and say, you know, I'm going to aim to leave this pressed for, for, for a good week. Now, if you have a press, obviously the, if you've, if you've got tobacco in there being pressed for a week, the press is effectively out of, out of action. And so, <clears throat> you know, we've got quite a lot of tobacco to get through. So it would take, bloody hell, you know, it, it, it would take like a month or two months. Um, this technique, there's no press, so I can have as many of these. You know, um, well, I doubt I'd ever fill the house, but uh, <laughs> you get what I mean. There's no, um, there's no limitation in that respect, you know. Right, so I'm going to um, prepare my string, and we'll we'll cut back in um, when I've got the string prepared, and then I can uh, walk you all through that. Right, well, as you can see, in the middle of the bundle, um, I'm using, um, it's actually one big loop of string. Um, so these are the, uh, the two ends, and I've tied them off with a clove hitch in the middle. They're going to the railings over there, because they're solid. And I don't know if you can see this. I just looped it around the railings. So 
it's kind of like a, a loop that's tied off at this end. Um, doing two just saves a bit of time, um, obviously because you're wrapping twice. Um, and it's good to leave it looped so you can, when you pull tight, the tension on the two um, strings remains pretty much equal. Um, and then, yeah, you probably guessed the rest. It is just a case. It's a bit of a gym workout, to be fair. Now, this is why I use wet string. This is a good um, time to explain this. Um, this is like a natural string. Um, I can't remember what it's called now, is it sizzle or, or something? Um, but by wetting it, it does introduce a bit of stretch. And of course, when the string dries out, it will contract a little bit. So you just get that little bit extra um, a compression at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and do this side. And then uh, you can see the two ends of the clove hitches here. They're long enough to tie on um, the loop of string to do the other the other side here. So um, yeah, I'll carry on and do that, and uh, we shall reconvene. Oh, oh so there we have um, halfway. You can see it's really. Uh, really solid. I just need to do um, this half. Uh, I need to get a move on actually. I think it's going to rain and I want to do another one of these today. Um, so yeah, obviously I've got the two ends here from the uh, first knots. So I'm just going to uh, tie on another loop, repeat process. Uh, I've actually had to move the string um, around the corner a bit because these um, handrails are a square. And this is pretty cheap string and I had a few um, string breakages where the edges of the rail had wore through the string. But I found another rail um, over there <laughs> and it's, um, it's a round rail so it's a lot more gentle on the string. So I'm going to go and do that and um, again reconvene here incredibly shortly, your time. So here we have it folks. Um, note to oneself um, uh, for improvement is when I did the initial um, rolling before I did the compression I tried to get the tobacco um, an even thickness. Um, this kind of, well, I didn't really make a problem it just made a bit more labour and a bit more of a ball ache. As the tobacco gets compressed in the middle it also tends to, to, to squidge along to the ends which kind of made the ends um, a bit bulbous, uh, which kind of made it a bit hard to tie. Um, so the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to go aim to have be thicker in the middle and sort of tapering down um, to the ends a little bit, I think. But I mean, yeah, it's all well and good. Um, I did try to do the halfway point. Um, I haven't checked the camera yet, but I, th I think I had the wrong setting on the camera, so I couldn't film that, but I mean... It is what it is, you know, it's basically a roll of tobacco, squidged hard of some string, um, and it works fine. Um, I see a lot of things on um, the various Facebook groups where people are kind of under this impression that you have to, you know, if you're getting black juice oozing from your tobacco, that's a good thing. I, I, I don't think that's right. Um, I mean, when you hear you know, places like Mac Baron or, you know, the big tobacco houses talking about 50 ton presses. We have to remember that they're pressing a lot bigger surface area. Um, if you're just using like a, a, a pasta press or something, you know, you, it's because the problem is, you know, I, I, I did it last year with one of the tobaccos I did. Um, it was a bit too damp and probably a bit too... Um, a bit too vigorous on the compression and the, the, the tobacco the sort of cellular walls and the fibers of the tobacco almost ceased to exist and just ended up like with this 
black kind of stuff <laughs> that you couldn't rub out. Um, it's kind of quite strange. Um, but this, this technique works well. Um, I'm going to do another one hopefully today before it rains. Um, and I'm going to leave it like this for a week. Um, there is one of the other stage um, that's new to this year. Um, but I'm not going to tell you about that yet. You have to wait till the next video. Um, which hopefully will be tomorrow. Um, especially if it's a rainy day because it's um, it's an indoor based video. It's just, um, you can probably guess what it is. I've probably give, slipped up, not slipped up, but I've probably given away a few clues. So, yep, I'm going to wrap it up for this video. Um, yeah, so that's like half a kilo of tobacco. We're on our way. Um, hopefully by the end of the day that will be a kilo of this Virginia Perique. Just a little, a little tiny bit of um, Oriental. I think it's like, um, let me work it out. Pro probably round about 10% or something. Like I just found it, kind of lifted it a little bit. But like I say, once, you know, once this has been matured and, you know, it's gone through the various stages, it's probably going to taste completely different anyway. So uh, <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> but it's, I think it's one of these, you know, it's like any craft. You know, you really do have to come back a year later and go back through this year's notes and see, uh, you know... Um, taste the changes in the tobacco I mean it's impossible to predict that so right um, I don't think I have any more words of wisdom um, so yeah I'll see you in a couple of days guys hope you enjoyed the video and yeah like I say we'll unwrap this in a week but there'll be a few a few other videos before then um, and hopefully when we start unwrapping this there'll be several others in in the queue um so there'll be quite a few unwrapping videos hopefully <laughs> all right then guys take care thanks for your time and if you have any questions about this um i'm sure i've probably been slightly confusing in places and maybe have omitted to say things uh, maybe some things haven't been clear but yeah you know leave me a comment and i'm more than happy to try and answer Right, definitely signing off. All right then, guys, thanks for your time. Uh, see you in a few days' time. Bye now.